let's do our gentle practice today, just starting with our warm-ups and see where we go from there. So toes straight ahead, kind of align your knee and second toe, hips right above that, sitting bones down. Keep the core activated, so ribs toward your spine and up, shoulders back and down. Just let your arms relax at your sides and focus inward as you breathe, drawing in energy and awareness and exhaling tension and stress. And just focus on that yoga perspective and how your body is responding today. Spread out through your toes. And inhaling, bring your arms up to shoulder level. Stretch through your fingertips and up through the ground. Hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch out to the front and exhale and clasp your hands behind. Lift your hard head, stretching back and exhale, pivoting over. Hands toward the ceiling, head toward your legs and move your head around. Relax your neck. And then with your knees bent, just lift your ribs and drop your sitting bones and wind your spine back all the way up and lift your heart, stretch your head back. Not too much of a bend in the back of your neck, though. Keep stretching out through your crown. Keep breathing, lifting your heart. And on an inhalation, come on up, releasing back to mountain. Just take a moment, feel your body. And again, inhaling, reach out. Hands to your heart, stretch to the front, shoulders down. Clasp your hands the opposite way behind you, so the other finger outside. And again, lift your heart, stretch your head back, and pivot at your hips, exhaling over. Hands up, head down, and again, just relax. Lift your sitting bones. Stretch the back of your leg as much as you'd like. And again, chin in as you wind all the way up. And again, into that upper body back bend, dropping your shoulders, stretching your head back. Heart high, hands toward the floor. And after a few breaths in the back bend, come on up and release. Feel your spine, notice the energy beginning to flow a little bit more. And we'll do our side stretches, arms out, palms toward the ceiling. Hands above your shoulders, keep the shoulders down. Pass your hands and turn them around to clasp. Arms next to your ears, stretch and keep your body facing front as you lean over to the side. Maximize that as much or as little as your body would like, pushing the foot you're leaning away from down, reaching out through your head and your hands, and always making sure your top shoulder doesn't lean forward. And then inhale to the top and switch the arms around, shoulders still down, and stretch, exhaling over to the opposite side. Just breathe and lengthen through that whole side. Feel the contraction on the side you're leaning toward. Take a breath, stretch it out. And then on an inhalation, come on back up. Exhale back to mountain. And just take a moment feeling your spine getting energized a little bit more. So really stretching the spine apart, base of the spine down and base of the skull up. We'll do our twist. Arms up, shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Stretch that spine apart and exhale to twist either direction. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, pivot over in the twist and relax. So lift your sitting bones, keep your arms next to your ears, and don't forget to breathe. Pull your body close to your legs if you like that or not, your choice. And then staying in your twist, work your way back up and still in the twist, lift your heart and pull your elbows back. Drop your shoulders, shoulder blades toward your waist. And a nice upper body back bend while you're twisting. Remember, prepare for your breath. And then inhale up, exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, lengthen and stretch 
Exhale and turn the other way. Another breath in. And as you exhale, come over into that forward bend. See if the weight is still on both feet evenly. Take a few breaths and relax. And then slowly work your way up. And again, upper body back, then lifting your heart, elbows back, shoulders down. And again, gentle on that lower back. Make sure when you're twisted, you don't overdo it. And inhaling to the top, exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, bring your arms straight up in extended now. And then pivot at your hips, bring your whole body flat coming forward. Push your sitting bones one way and crown the other. Get as parallel to the floor as everything can, everything straight. And then drop in your right dog, just relax. Lift your sitting bones, pull in a little deeper if you like. And then arms back to the front and one more winding up. Shoulders back and down and into mountain pose. Feel your spine all warmed up in various directions. And let's pivot here at the hips, so bring your thumb into that hip crease at the top of your thigh. And again, bring your back parallel to the floor as much as you can. You can slide your hands down under your knees and press in, elbows, knees, and back, full straight. Chin a little bit towards your chest. Remember, keep stretching through the back of the neck as well as the whole spine. Take a breath, get as straight and parallel as you can. If you've got a mirror nearby, it's a really good thing to check in the mirror and see if you're actually pulling those ribs slightly down, heart slightly down, but keeping that core active and supporting your lower back. So no hunching up, no sinking down. And then just drop again, ragdoll, pull in, and relax. And again, as you get back with those arms at the front, just wind your way back up and into mountain pose. So we're going to step Y and do something similar. So again, thumbs into that crease at the top of your hips, or thighs at the hips. Push the sitting bones slightly back, lean with your chest and chin. And again, see if you can bring your body nice and parallel to the floor. Stretch it out, sitting bones one way, crown the other way. You can keep your hands up there on your thighs. You can slide them down under your knees, on your shins, or you can bring them under your shoulders to the floor. Stretch out, lengthening. Just feel that whole body core active. So get those more muscles working to support your spine. Nice parallel body to the floor. And then hands on your legs and slide back up, keeping your spine nice and straight and back into mountain pose. So feel your body. We're gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna turn the opposite way so you see that things are straight. So again, mountain pose to start with, thumbs to that hip crease, Pivot, chest and chin lead. Get your body nice and straight. So make sure this lower back is supported by your core. So don't hunch it up, but don't sink it down. Chest not sinking to the floor, but not hunching up either. You want everything as straight as you can. So sitting bones push a little bit back, clam forward. And again, you can put your hands under your knees on your shins and get that halfway up. Stretch going for your body. Keep lengthening the spine as you're doing that. And then exhale and drop into ragdoll just hang. And chin in, starting at the bottom of the spine, just unwinding your weight forward. Shoulders back and down. And again, into that pose, nice and stacked. And we'll do the wide leg one again also. So step a little wide. Thumbs to that hip crease. Again, chest and chin lead. Don't 
crunch the back of the neck. So don't keep looking forward, look toward the floor as you come down. And again, make sure that lower back is supported, that chest isn't sinking or hunching up. And you can again, bring your hands under your knees on the shins and get that stretch there. Or you can bring the hands down to the floor and pivot a little de deeper into that pivot. But remember, those sitting bones push away, crown in the opposite direction. And then again, hands on your legs, sliding back up and into mountain pose. So take a moment and we'll do a balance practice. So get your heels back next to the back of the mat making sure that your toes are pointing forward and that your knee is going toward that second toe on the foot you're going to sink into. And we're going to sink down with the ankle, knee, hip, and shoulder lined up. Make sure that core is working to support your spine. So remember, ribs toward your spine end up really lengthen and elongate through that midsection, crown to the ceiling. We'll do our balance warm up first. So just bring your foot up a little or more or toward your heart. So remember a little rolling at the top of the thigh to keep that leg from going out to the side. And then work your ankle because we want to make sure that our ankles stay flexible as we age. Because if you get old and your ankles aren't flexible, it's easier to fall and break something. And then flex and point to straighten it out and put that foot back down. And we'll shift to the other side. So remember, you want to really get the base of the toes working for you, not gripping with those toes on the foot you're sinking down into, or working to support your spine, lengthening up, breathing, sinking into that grounded foot, making sure everything is lined up in the bones to support you before you bring that other leg up. And again, only as high as you want to go. You can pull it way in if you love it, but you don't have to. And again, work your ankle. So just circle it both ways. Get it nice and flexible. And then flex and point a few times and bring that foot back down. Take a moment there, just feel what's going on. And we're going to do another balance practice. So I'm going to turn to the side because we're going to do that same pivot at the hip joint that we just did. And our first version is going to be called stick. So for stick, we're going to keep the feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Figure out which balance foot you want to use. Bring your arms out at shoulder level. Turn the palms toward the ceiling. Bring the hands right above your shoulders so everything is nice and straight. And then we're going to bring one foot just behind as you sink into that balanced foot. And then if that's feeling like, oh, yeah, okay, keep everything in your body straight, pivot at that hip joint, and bring your body toward the front. So just a little, not too far. Keep pushing your foot and hands away. Arms next to your ears, and then pivot back up and release your arms and feel what's going on in your body. So we're going to do the same thing with the other balance foot. So remember, you don't have to go too far. You can just stay almost up and, up and down, or you can pivot further. And if you love the pivot, we're going to do another version that actually pivots even further. So once again, bring your feet hip width apart with those toes facing the front, ankles, knees, hips, shoulder lined up, core active, arms at at shoulder level, keep those shoulder blades down throughout, turn your palms toward the ceiling, bring those hands right above your shoulders, and again, sink into your balance foot, spreading the toes, not gripping, bring that one foot back, get everything as straight as you can to start with, and begin pivoting just a little, going only as far as your body would go. 
Keep reaching down through the foot, through the hands, through the head. And then pivot back up and release. So we're going to move on to another version that we're going to pivot a little bit more to make it easier. We're going to keep the arms along the body instead of extended out because that longer fulcrum makes it harder. So again, standing feet parallel, everything lined up, core activated, shoulders relaxed, hands right at your side, sink into your grounded foot. And again, bring that foot back, that opposite foot. Make sure that you're stable first and begin your pivot. So if you need to, you can bring your thumbs into that hip crease just to remind you where the bend is. And see if you can go as far as parallel to the floor. You can keep those toes on the back foot, tip down toward the floor. Chest and chin leading, keep that head as straight through the neck as you can. And when you're ready to release, just pivot back up and breathe. Oh, you're supposed to be breathing the whole time. But go ahead, exhale that stress because yeah, balance is a little bit stressful. And we're gonna do the same thing, of course, balance on the other foot. So once again, arms along your sides, or thumbs in the hip crease, and get everything straight and activated first, bring the other foot back. And again, keeping those toes pointing down, go ahead and go as far into the pivot as your body would like. And again, reaching out through the bottom of your foot and the top of your head, chest, shoulders even toward the floor, hips even, so don't let that back hip that, or that hip that's up swing out to the side. Keep her reaching out and breathing and slowly pivoting back up and back into the mountain pose. Again, notice that your body may be a little bit stressed. So just relax because balance is a bit challenging for most people. And if you really loved that, you could put the arms overhead to do it. That's a warrior three. We're not gonna do that today because there's other things to do. So again, back into your mountain pose, hands to your heart, shoulders and shoulder blades down, sitting bones toward the floor, take a breath, release all that balance stress. Keep looking at your hands, bringing them up toward the ceiling, and a nice back bend, pulling those thumbs back, still looking at them as you lift your heart, and then exhaling, follow the hands to your heart. And then pivoting at the hips and coming again all the way over into red dog. Lift those sitting bones, drop in, pull a little bit closer if you love it. Exhale, hands back to the front. Slide your hands up along your shins under your knees. Get that halfway up, stretch both feet on the floor. Exhale them down, palms together, inhaling, and again, hands to your heart. Go ahead all the way toward the ceiling, looking at your hands. Again, a nice back bend, and come straight up. Separate, swan dive, chest and chin lead, arms out toward the sides, right at shoulder level. Again, stop parallel to the floor and see if you can stretch everything out straight in your knees, elbows, and back. And then drop into ragdoll. Pull in, get a good stretch. Release, slide up, straighten again and stretch. And then from your halfway up stretch, bring those arms out at shoulder level. Stretch through your fingertips. Knees straight, elbows straight, back flat. Keep your back flat and your arms at shoulder level as you pivot up, see if you manage that. Palms toward the ceiling, look overhead, hands together. Exhale, hands to your heart. And we'll pivot again, exhaling all the way down. And this time, transition into child's pose. 
So hips back on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead to the floor. Take a few breaths and relax. Now bring your hands out in front and we're going to pivot up into table position. So wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. Remember, you can fold your mat and get a little less bend in your wrist if that's something that helps make your wrists feel better. Knees under your hips, toes straight back, wrists, elbows, and shoulders lined up. And again, shoulder blades toward your hips and ribs up toward your spine, core active supporting your lower back. Just maybe a little bit toward your thumbs so you don't punch up through that upper back. And we're going to keep the knees bent and we're going to lift that leg out toward the side. So just a little rotation there, flex the foot and make everything about parallel to the floor with that leg. So a little hip rotator work. And then pivot that knee back down to the floor. Circle your wrists if you need to. And we'll do the other side. So again, everything stays where it is as you lift that leg out to the side. Flex the foot. Keep everything parallel. See if you've got that spine still as straight as you can. Take a breath. Exhale, knee back down to the floor. Take a moment there. Sink back hips to your heels. Circle your wrists. Take a moment to breathe. And then hands back into child's pose. Just take a moment to breathe. And again, arms back to the front. And pivoting back up into table. And again, everything nicely lined up, wrists, elbows, and shoulders, hips, and knees, and feet. This time we're going to bring the leg out, right leg out and up to hip level. You can bring those toes down toward the floor. And then bend the knee, bring it up toward the ceiling. And again, we're going to rotate that hip and bring the leg as much into that parallel position toward the floor as you can. And then knee coming back into place. And the leg extending straight out. Both hips facing the floor evenly, just like your shoulders. And then bring the knee to the floor. And again, circle those wrists if you need to before we do the other side. So bringing that Left leg back or that opposite leg back, bring it up to hip level, flex the foot, bend the knee, keep it nice and perpendicular. And again, rotate that hip out to the side, knee out to the side, and it as parallelish to the floor as your body was willing to do. And then again, rotating it back. Straighten the leg out right at hip level. Bring the knee to the floor. And again, go ahead back and circle your wrists. You can keep that arms out in front, circling your wrists, or you can go all the way into child's pose once more. Make a bow. And one more time, coming back up into table. And again, as you get into table, make sure everything's lined up and your spine is supported. And we're going to bring the right leg back again and bend the foot down toward the floor, flexing the heel. We're going to take that opposite arm up, another balance practice. So if you've got your right leg up, bring your left arm up next to your ear, stretch it out. And then hand to the floor, knee to the mat, circle your wrist if you need to. And we'll do, of course, same thing to the other side. 
So bring that left leg back and up to hip level. Flex the foot, find your opposite arm and bring it next to your ear. Shoulder, shoulder blades still toward your waist, core activated, supporting that lower back, stretch it out. And then hand down, knee to the floor, sink back, circle your wrists. And again, keep circling or go into child's pose. And one final balance for the day. So again, hands to the front, pivoting up into the table. Get everything nicely lined up and we'll start the same way. So right foot back, toes toward the floor, left arm up next to your ear, hips and shoulders facing the floor. Bend your back knee and bring the right foot up toward the ceiling. Turn the left palm toward the ceiling and then raise them both. So a little back bend here in your balance. And then straightening everything out, palm toward the floor, hand to the mat, and knee back down. Circle your wrists if you need to. Keep breathing, because we're gonna do one more, of course, to balance the body. So what is this? Left leg out, right at hip level, flex the foot, and bring your right arm up next to your ear. Bend your left knee, foot toward the ceiling. Turn your right hand palm up. And again, raise the hand and the foot just a little bit into a back bend as much or as little as you like. Hips and shoulders still facing the floor as evenly as you can. And then palm toward the floor, leg back straight, hand to the mat, knee to the floor. And once more, hips back to your heels, so you can circle those wrists and release any stress. Take a moment just in child's pose and relax. And then inhaling, go ahead up, legs out to the front, and we're gonna go all the way onto our backs. So, sitting bones a little behind you, core active supporting you, everything stacked for support. And then slowly round your spine, rolling down with that lower back, lower ribs, shoulder blades, shoulders, and hold back onto the floor. Recline into duration, just take a moment, get adjusted and comfortable. And we'll do our twist before our relaxation. So hands, palms up or down at shoulder level, extended straight out from your shoulders. Sitting bones toward your heels, press your back down, bend your knees, draw those heels in right near your sitting bones. And we're just gonna do our bent knee twist. So press your back down and bring your feet up off the floor, knees right above your hips. Roll over to the side with your knees. Turn your head to the opposite side. Relax those shoulders down. Hands, palms up or down. Your choice. Just allow your whole body to relax into the twist. Deep breath. Exhale in tension. Knees come as far toward the floor as they want to. And if you're loving the low back twist, remember you can bring your knees up toward your elbow a little extra stretch, or you can just keep them off the floor, bringing a pad under the knees or your feet on the floor to support. Take a breath, just relax, head turning for that neck twist if you love it, but not too much. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades down on the floor, middle back twist. Always personal practice, what's right for you. And then heels toward your hips, roll onto your back, and bring the knees back above your hips. Feet to the floor if you need to straighten it out, and we'll roll those knees over to the opposite side. Turn your head the other direction, and again, just relax. So shoulders, shoulder blades down on the floor, get a nice middle back twist. Knees as far down as they want to go. 
head training for your neck area, your choice how far you go in any of those. Knee toward your elbow if you like the low back to get a little extra work there. For not always personal practice. Take a few breaths, just relaxing into your twist. And when you're ready to release, heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back, and bringing your feet to the floor. Slide your legs out, hands, palms up near your sides, and into corpse position for a relaxation. So as always, just breathe deep. Let your body sink into that surface beneath you. And just allow everything to release and relax. Soften your hip area, your shoulder area. Lots of balance today, so just let your belly soften and sink. Release and relax through the hips. Lots of pelvics there at the top of the thighs, so just release through that whole hip and pelvic area as well. Heart open, shoulders sinking to the floor. Just let your body grow heavy. Relaxing and sinking into that surface beneath you, supported by the earth. As you breathe and relax, just let your body grow heavy in that earthbound position, letting awareness of your body release from your thoughts. As those thoughts release, know that other thoughts will come to your mind. Just let them go as well. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. Just allow those thoughts to drift away without attention. Breathing deep, soften your body, releasing your mind, allowing your awareness to turn inward, finding the peace within. Fill your body with peace. Feel your mind with peace. Just take a while being peace. And if you want to keep relaxing longer today, just stay relaxed as long as you have time for. It's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness with your breath back to the body. Begin moving gently, however feels good for you. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, bend your knees, heels up towards your hips. Press your back down and draw your knees up towards your heart. Wrap your arms around. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate some yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And to release, speak to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you. Thanks for joining me.